um, just a little different than what you're used to hearing me speak. As I listened to the Lord this week and said, well, Lord, what is it we are going to do on Sunday night? <clears throat> so, I do want you to listen carefully tonight. You'll see how God brought the worship right into the message. And uh, only God knows how to do that. Only God knows how to put all those pieces together, so to speak, to weave that beautiful tapestry. So the name of the message tonight is Traveling to a Foreign Land, from Earth to Heaven. I love to travel. Most of you know that. I love to go with Spencer because I feel safe with him. We both carry passports as proof of our Canadian citizenship. When we reach any border, someone is in authority to request our passports, to screen them, and to grant us entrance to their land. You must not travel to a foreign land hoping to make entrance just because you're traveling with someone else who happens to have a passport. You do not enter on, that, on their behalf. This is your responsibility. You have to have your own passport. That is your work. That is your job. And before anybody leaves on a trip, there are many things to do. It's called preparation. First, you perhaps purchase tickets for a plane or a ship or however you're going to travel. You settle your accommodations. You make sure you've got some place to put your head down at night. You buy insurance to cover yourselves in case of an emergency, whether it's medical or something unexpected. You purchase any items that you don't happen to have on hand at home that you want to slip in your suitcase. You pack your suitcase. You leave full information for your family of where you can be reached in case of an emergency. You make sure that your mail and your newspapers are collected every day so that people driving around your area don't suspect that your home is empty. You have someone check your home every day. Insurance people like to know that someone's been in and out. And you change currency to the currency of the land where you're going to visit so that you will be prepared for anything that might come up. Lots of preparation takes place before we arrive at our destination. How about destination heaven? Have you sat down and planned for that trip? Are you prepared to go to heaven? I'm glad to see some hints that are bobbing yes. Have you set all things in order, so to speak? Have you purchased insurance to cover your funeral expenses so that you're not leaving that burden on someone in your family? Have you purchased a grave plot for where your body will be buried as your spirit will rise? This is a big one. Have you settled any disagreements with family or friends that perhaps you need to give or ask forgiveness? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Do you have your passport? Jesus is your passport. He is the only way to the Father. John chapter 14, verse 6 tells us that. Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God. And the real truth and the real life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. It couldn't be written any more plain. Have you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior? If you have, you can be rest assured of your destination. Heaven awaits you when your time comes. Your passport is Jesus. 
Paul wrote, For our citizenship is in heaven, for which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. If you'd like to go there. The Amplified says it this way, but we are different because our citizenship is in heaven. And from there, we eagerly await the coming of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, let's look at that as well. So that's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And he raised us up together with him when we believed, and seated us with him in heavenly places, because we are in Christ Jesus. Those of us who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, then we know that we are raised up. We are redeemed because Christ has purchased us on the cross when he gave up his life for us. He paid a debt he didn't owe. And we owed a debt we couldn't possibly pay. Hence, God sent his son to pay the debt of sin for the world. And Jesus freely gave his life to pay that sin debt in full. When we truly accept his gift, accepting him as Lord and Savior, we are redeemed. Praise God. We are redeemed. Raise a hallelujah. Thank you, Ernie. If you look at John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Most of you know this by heart. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son so that whoever, whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but that, he, but that the world might be saved through him. He came with one purpose in mind. God had a purpose and plan for the birth of Christ. So when our time on earth is finished, and when our work here is done, God calls us home, back to himself in heaven. And he knows if we have the proper credentials. That being the acceptance of Jesus as Lord and Savior and being born again. We need God's approval to enter the foreign land of heaven. His land. You cannot enter heaven just because you have a loved one in heaven waiting for you. You can't ever enter heaven just because you are a good person here on earth. And you can't enter heaven just because you attended Sunday service every Sunday of your entire life. Are you hearing me, church? Mm -hmm. You can't enter heaven just because you're the best parent, the best friend, <clears throat> the kindest person, or whatever other 
means you might think that you can enter heaven. This final trip from earth to heaven is based on one truth. Accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. We cannot go to heaven just as we are. We need the blood of Jesus to cover us. Mm -hmm. And when we truly accept his gift, then and only then will heaven's gates open for our arrival. Praise Jesus. This will be our final destination. Mm -hmm. Christ made the sacrifice for all sinners. And God accepted that sacrifice for us. Christ became guilty of all sin, and he gave us his righteousness. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Chapter 5, verse 21. He, God, made Christ who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in a right relationship with him by his gracious, loving kindness. Praise God. Praise God. The King James Version reads, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, Christ, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That is grace. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The grace we live in today as the redeemed in Christ. We are redeemed. When we receive Christ's righteousness, God gives us a new nature. Mm -hmm. What a gift. Mm -hmm. He changes us from the inside out. We become born again. And we can't do that by ourselves. Mm -hmm. right. Only God can perform that miracle. John chapter 3, verse 3, if you'd like to go there. This is Jesus speaking to Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. And if you look at verse 3, Jesus answered him after Nicodemus had been questioning him, speaking with him. Jesus answered him and said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and sanctified, he cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God. And as we keep going, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born again, can he? And Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot ever enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. The physical is merely physical. And that which is born of the Spirit is is spirit. Do not be surprised that I have told you, you must be born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> when we are born again, we are born of water, we are baptized. Mm. And when it says of the spirit, that means that we're spiritually born. What a beautiful declaration in our life to be able to say, I am a born again follower of Christ. I know who I am in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I know who he is in me. You know, we hear people say that. <coughs> and it slips out of our mouth. Do you really stop and think about what it means? I tell you, 
When you're standing to do a service for someone who's gone home, this becomes very real. Mm -hmm. Sure does. This becomes very real. If Mary were to pick up the phone tomorrow morning and say to me, the angels came last night and took Vince home. You know, if she followed that up with, will you do a service, a celebration of his life? I would be honored and I would celebrate Vince's life because I know that I know he has his passport in order. All right. He knows the foreign land, the ground of which he'll step into, Amen. the solid, sanctified ground of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he's well able to do that. Mm -hmm. And as my heart would be sad for Mary in the fact that she would then face days alone, you know, I almost could say that it wouldn't be long before Mary would follow. And again, we would celebrate. When it comes to that time, and we're doing that kind of service, it brings me to a place where I am reminded of how important this message is. Mm -hmm. And I hope everyone here tonight is hearing it, oh receiving it in a way that you check and make sure that you know, that you know, that you know. Mm -hmm. And as this goes on the airwaves, I trust that God will touch people's hearts with it. Because this is not typically a message I might bring. But God sat me down and said, this is important, you need to bring this message. Mm -hmm. People need to know and admit that we are helpless and that we need to depend on God's mercy. When God gave me that line, he shouted it. People need to know and admit that you're helpless and that you need God's mercy. Yes. yes. And I sat at my table and said, yes. Yes, we need your mercy. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Only then can we ever stand before God. Only after we have accepted Christ as the one who carried our sin to the cross and gave up his life for payment of our sin. Only then. We trust Christ with our life here on earth, and we trust in Christ for our eternal life with him. I'm going to tell you here tonight that if I go before you, I'm waiting for you. And I want to see you all I want to know that you're coming. <clears throat> Just as God wants to know you're coming, he's waiting. Mm -hmm. When we accept Christ, God sees us as glorified beings. Wow, imagine that. Hear the promise in that. If you look in your Bibles at, ch at Romans chapter four, verse 16 <coughs> and 17. <clears throat> Romans chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, reading from the Amplified. Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith, that is, confidence, confident trust in the unseen God, in order that it may be given as an act of grace, his unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham. Not only for those Jewish believers who believe the law, but also for those Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, who is the spiritual father of all of us. As is written in scripture, I have made you a father of many nations. In the sight of him, 
in whom he believed, that is, God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. Mm -hmm. That which does not exist. We use an expression, God sees in us what we cannot see. God sees us as glorified beings. God promises us in Romans 8, 38 and 39, that nothing will separate us from his love when we have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. <coughs> Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will ever be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord Death cannot separate us, folks. Mm, right. Death cannot separate us from God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will sleep Hallelujah. and we will wake mm. in the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. For each one of us who Hallelujah. have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. Hallelujah. When God calls us home, the heavens will await our arrival. <clears throat> You know, at Christmas time, you that are parents and you've got children away, you're just waiting for your kids to come home. Maybe you have to go to the airport to pick somebody up. Or maybe you just have to drive across town because they don't have a car. Whatever the reason, whatever, whatever mode of way of getting them home, as a parent, you want them with you. Think how much more God wants us with him in his time. I am not saying that I want to send any of you home early. I'm saying that in his time, because in Ecclesiastes it says there is a time to live and a time to die. Yes. But there is a time to live eternally. Yes. And that's what excites me. Mm. Sure. I don't have a fear of death. Mm -hmm. I don't have a fear of death. No. God is going to walk me through that valley, and there I'll be, standing in the presence of Jesus. D.L. Moody, a lot of you know that name, at death, caught a glimpse of heaven. Awakening from his sleep, he said, listen to this, earth recedes. Heaven opens before me. If this is death, it is sweet. There is no valley here. God is calling me, and I must go. Beautiful. That's taken from a book called One Minute After You Die. I've read that book now a couple of times, and I'm going to bring a message on that some night. <laughs> One minute after you die is too late to make a decision for Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Okay. And every time I conduct a funeral, I know that one minute after you die, it's too late. Mm -hmm. That's right. <coughs> Christ said in John chapter 11 verse 25 and 26 it was Jesus speaking to Martha after the death of her brother Lazarus in the King James version it reads Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and in verse 26 and whoever whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believeth thou this now it'll read just a little differently in your Amplified, but Reverend Vince loaned me a King James Version, and so I did look that one up in the, in the King James Version. And Paul asked in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, in the Amplified Version it reads, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? When we travel 
to the foreign land of heaven. We must be certain that we've prepared ourselves in Jesus Christ so that our entrance into heaven is signed and sealed under the blood and through his resurrection. Mm -hmm. It's signed under the blood of the cross Hallelujah. and in his resurrection. He sets for us an example of what our death will be. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Are you ready? Are you ready to travel to a foreign land? You might not be ready tonight in the sense of leaving. I want you to ask yourself the question, are you ready when the time comes? Are you fully prepared? Not a little bit prepared, not somewhat prepared, not preparation in the making. Are you fully prepared? You need to have everything in order. And you need to be ready on a moment's notice. You will never regret accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior and living here for him so that after this life is over, you can and will live fully in the wonderful presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Have your passport ready. Have your passport ready. <coughs> Some of us will have some time before the Lord closes in. We might have those moments or hours, or days or months, when our journey home is a slow go, as they say. And others will not have time to think. They may simply be preparing supper. I have a friend years ago who was putting food in a microwave to feed her daughter. And she dropped it on the floor of an aneurysm. Mm -hmm. Do you think she thought that? No. I have an uncle who said to me on December 24th, the morning of December 24th, I'm going in just to lie on the bed for a few minutes before I help you decorate the rest of that tree. I'll be up in half an hour. He wasn't. And within that time, I had a call from Halifax that his brother John had dropped dead that morning eating his oatmeal. I'm not trying to make this a sad situation. What I'm trying to do is to shake you up a bit and make you realize that one moment you are here. That's right. And one moment have your passport ready. Be ready to meet Jesus. And for your family members, mention this tonight to them. If you have an opportunity to talk to them, Mention it to them. Ask them if they're ready. If they're 19, if they're 39, if they're 59, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That's right. It doesn't matter. I want each one of you to be confidently able to say, I am a king's kid. Mm -hmm. I have my passport ready. I've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. And I know that in my death I will rise again Amen. to life eternal. Amen. Life eternal. I can't tell you how long that is, but I can tell you it's longer than what you're going to breathe here. <laughs> so you're going to have sweet breaths in eternity. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, touch each heart tonight. Touch each heart. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for preparing our way to heaven through your son Jesus. We confess 
that we are sinners and that and we confess that without the completed work on the cross carried out by Jesus on our behalf that for those of us who have accepted him as Lord and Savior we would not gain entrance to heaven if we do not accept him I thank Jesus for his death for the burial and the resurrection and I believe that this too is my guarantee to be raised to life eternal upon my earthly demise. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thank you, Lord, for this very promise, which brings me comfort and consoles me. I can face death, knowing the victory of heaven awaits my arrival because you are my savior. I can face death because Jesus lives. Thank you that my journey from earth to heaven is complete in Jesus Christ, my Lord and savior. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.